Right. Well, it says that I'm live, but I'm not going to talk too much until I can see that there's a few people here. Oh, my computer wants to do a uh, an update. Let's just shut that down. I think I'm still live. No one's turned up. I wonder if I've done something wrong. I wonder if I set it to unlisted instead of public. <laughs> something I'd do. Well, it says there's three people watching, so I must be uh, I must have done something right. If there's anyone there, drop me a comment and let me know whether you're uh, whether I'm visible or not, because there's taking a while for people to turn up, and I'm thinking maybe I might have done something wrong. Oh, here we go. I've got a comment, Mitch Kelly. G'day, Mitch. Thanks for dropping in. Ah, yes. Cohen the man too. Hi, Robbie. G'day, Cohen. Default dash. Oh, here we go. Ellie Johnson, SJ Fishing, Don and Norton, righto. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. All right, now that I know it's working, it took probably 30 seconds of just sitting here before anyone's comments started showing up. So I wasn't sure whether I was working or not. Now that it's coming through one after another, bing, 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 bing. <laughs> Thank you for joining in. Now, in this video, <clears throat> pardon me, in this video, I'm going to explain to you what's coming out on my channel next week, like I've done the last few Fridays. And then I'm just going to talk about YouTube ads because people often ask me about YouTube ads and how they work and how I get paid. It is a bit of a touchy subject with regards to the Google terms and conditions. So I've got to be careful what I say, but I can give you an overview because I know a lot of people are curious and I can explain how the uh, how the whole system works with regards to ads and me making a living, a full-time living on YouTube. But before that, let's talk about what videos we've got coming up next week and also Huge thank you to all of you that have been tuning into my Friday night live streams. I won't be able to do it every Friday night, but where I can, I will. I enjoy it. They're great. Now, we're, uh, and thank you for all these people uh, leaving messages and saying hello and hi. I am, uh, I'll have a read through them after the live stream, but I'm not going to like in, in, get involved in conversation during the live stream because I want the video to stay for people to view afterwards, and it's just not going to be very engaging viewing if I'm having one-on-one -on -one chat. So I will go through and read all the comments individually after the live stream. Now, next week, what have we got? What have I got coming up next week on next week's uh, on here on Robbie Fishing? First, I'm going to do what I forgot to do before I went live and turn my put my phone in silent so that it doesn't ring and distract me. Right, coming up next week on Sunday night. I have an absolute ripper of a trout fishing video. It's a rainbow trout fishing video. It's called Catching Big Fat Healthy Rainbow Trout. And these fish were so fat and chunky. I was in a stream that was really well balanced. It wasn't loaded with heaps and heaps of little trout, but there were a few. And because there wasn't so many, they were, the ones that are there are able to grow really big. And I've got some lovely trout. That's Sunday night. Monday night on Redfin Fishing Up at Lake Buffalo. That's Monday night. Tuesday night when I often have the night off, I'm going to throw a short video in. It's a Murray Cod Fishing video. It's called Washed Out, a very wet Murray Cod Fishing Adventure. It bucketed down rain while I was fishing. Ha! And then on – that was Tuesday night. I think I've got that wrong. That was Tuesday night. I'll recap in a second. Wednesday night, I'm fishing with bait at Lake William Hovel. When I, you might have seen me talking in recent videos about the stitches in my leg. I was meant to go out there kayak fishing one day, and the doctor said no, nah, no kayaking with stitches, so I couldn't go. So I went up there and went bait fishing off the bank instead. Yeah, for the record, the stitches are out. I've had stitches in my leg. I had them in for two weeks. They came out Wednesday, just gone. I had a biopsy on a little skin blemish, and it came back fine. So everything is good, and I'm ready to kayak when I get a chance. So that's Wednesday night, kayak fishing at Lake William Hovel. Thursday night, I'm going to finish the week with my monthly mashup. Robbie fishing, bloopers and game camera footage. I love putting my game cameras in. They're not in at the moment. I'm hoping to put them in early next week. So just to recap what's coming up here on the Robbie Fishing Channel next week, <clears throat> starting Sunday night, we've got a, uh, a rainbow trout fishing video where I catch nice, chunky, fat rainbow trout and not only is it a trout fishing video, it's a uh, it's a real-time lure review. I'm using one of the lures that was sent to me in my mail time. They came last year in the winter, and I just haven't had a chance to use them. They're a little nymph with a, like a fly fishing nymph, bead-headed nymph, but with a revolving blade, and the trout are climbing all over them. That's a, Make sure you tune into that one. That's Sunday night. 
Then Sunday night, the trout. Monday night, I'm up at Lake Buffalo chasing redfin with soft plastics. Then Tuesday night, I've got a short Murray cod fishing video where it poured rain and I got drenched. Wednesday night, I'm bait fishing at Lake William Hovel off the bank because I doctor said I couldn't go kayak fishing. Thursday night is my monthly mashup, all my bloopers and my outtakes and all that kind of jargon. Now, look at all you amazing people leaving these comments. Thank you all so much. I will have a look through them later on. Now, that's what's coming up next week. Now, if you want to know more about, if you want to know about how ads work, the annoying ads on YouTube or how YouTubers like myself actually earn our living, then stay tuned because I'm going to tell you right now. When you watch YouTube videos, there's ads. There's always an ad at the start. And then there's often ads in the middle, embedded into the video, or as it seems, embedded into the video. And that can be annoying, but they also pay my wage. Now, I've got to be careful what I can and can't say because there are lots of stuff around um, the terms and conditions if you Google with talking around about uh, monetization and stuff like that. So I'm just going to give you the brief overview. Basically, this is how it works. Somebody pays to run an ad. Let's say Toyota. Let's say Toyota pay to run an ad campaign. They give the money to YouTube. YouTube have used that money to build this amazing website that we're watching now, and they do all the management, all the organising. They've got a whole team, heaps of people work for them. That money pays their wages and pays for the upkeep of the website and everything like that. But YouTube realised that if there wasn't people like me making content for their website, no one's going to tune in to see them ads. So they pay us an incentive to put videos on there. And, look, it's around about half and half. It's not quite half and half, but it's pretty close to half and half. So, hypothetically, say say YouTube, say Toyota pays YouTube $100 to run an ad campaign. YouTube will get around 50 and the creator will get around 50 of that dollars, of that money. Now, these are only rough numbers, rough figures. There's different types of ad. There is ads. There's, like, blanket ads, like the Chemist Warehouse and Bunnings and government ads during COVID, we all saw the ads around COVID and social distancing and staying inside and there's only three reasons to leave the home and blah, blah, blah. They are blanketed ads and everybody sees them. And then there's targeted ads. Because it's not television, on television, they run the same ad. I can be watching The Chase at this time of night because it's my favourite show. You can be watching the same show from somewhere else in the state and you're probably going to get the same ad. But on YouTube, it doesn't work that way. The ads are determined by what you watch. So blanketed ads like the Chemist Warehouse, the government stuff and you know, Bunnings, Woolies, all those, they go over everything. But the targeted ads, let's let's use a... Uh, Let's use an example. Say Trellies run a video ad, the fishing tackle shop in Geelong. Say they run a, a fishing tackle ad. They can choose who they want to see it. They might choose, we want people only in Victoria to see it. We want, you know, people that watch fishing videos to see it because Google can see what we watch. They're called tracking cookies. And therefore, people that watch lots of fishing videos are going to get the ads for Trellies. People that watch no fishing videos, but they might watch snow skiing videos, they're not going to get any ads from trellies. Now, people that watch lots of snow skiing videos, during the winter they probably get hammered with ads about snow skiing, yet people that watch fishing videos or golf videos don't see those videos. No? And a good example, I've just recently taken up playing golf. I used to play 25 years ago before we even had the into the web, and I enjoyed it. And just recently I've started taking it up for a bit of exercise and just to work on my health and my fitness. So I've started watching a few golf videos for inspiration and just a few tutorial stuff. Guess who's now getting golf ads when he watches YouTube videos? <laughs> because YouTube or Google can see that I'm interested in golf. So if someone like Drummond Golf is running an ad campaign or there's a golf game or a golf app, they're going to serve it to my screen so that I see it because they know what I'm looking at. And because of this, because of this targeted ads, not everyone sees all the ads. So... I might have a 10-minute video and it might have two ad breaks in it. Then I might see two ads. You might see no ads. Maybe nobody's advertising in your niche or there's not a lot of ads running at that particular point in time. Most people will probably see one ad. So I can, I've, I can choose with my video how many ads to put in it. Now, when you upload a video, if you're monetized, YouTube automatically puts ads in and most people leave them as they are. And that's fine. So don't growl at other people if they don't do what I do because that's just what most people do. But I like to try and strategically place them into sections of my videos 
that don't interrupt or interfere with the viewing. I don't want to hook a big fish and say, got him and start reeling it in. Next thing you know, you've got someone standing there trying to tell you what's on special at the chemist warehouse. So what I do, I try and edit my videos in such to have an average of one ad break every five minutes. Now, television has one ad break every eight minutes usually, or it depends what you're watching. If it's the football, it's after each goal, or if it's the cricket, they normally have heaps after each wicket or after each over. But most TV shows, 30-minute shows, will have an ad every eight minutes or so. I try and insert my ad breaks on average. I average one for every five minutes. So if it's a 10-minute video, there should be two ads. Normally, I have one about the two and a half to three and a half minutes and one up around about eight and a half minutes. If it's a 15-minute video, there might be one at two, one at eight, and one at 13, or one at three, one at nine, and one at 14, or something like that. I try and space them about five minutes apart, and I start a bit early so that I can get them in. Now, if you saw my fly fishing video with Andy from uh, Andy Colston from Adventure Camping and Fishing on last Sunday night, YouTube, by default, put six ad breaks in that video. I actually – sorry, I'm getting a pop-up here. I actually took two out and then rearranged them. I try and have a fade. So I'll have a, a scene where I catch a fish, I release the fish, and then I'll fade into a little black screen, then I'll come out of the black, and that's where I like to try and put the ads, just so that it doesn't interrupt. There are times when it does interrupt. Live streams like now, you could get an ad bang right in the middle. YouTube is something I've just discovered recently with YouTube is that you can insert mid-roll ads into live streams. I never knew that because I haven't been live publicly. I do a live stream most months on, on Patreon, but I turn the ads off for that. But here I leave them on, and I just took a photo of what it says when I went live. A little pop-up screen comes up, and it gives me the options. Choose your ad frequency. Conservative. Lower earnings potential but less interrupted viewer experience or balanced. Medium earnings potential. Balanced viewer experience, aggressive, higher earnings potential, more interrupted viewer experience. So in other words, sorry, distracted. So in other words, I can have heaps of ads, but it's going to be annoying. I can have not many ads, and it won't be annoying, but I won't earn any money. Or I can go in the middle, and I always try and aim around about in the middle, and that's what I do when I set my own ads. So that's how the ads work. Company pays, could be the government paying for their COVID ads. Coming up to a federal election, any federal election, you'll notice that there are lot, even state elections, there are lots of ads. We all get Barnaby Joyce on our screen telling us who we should vote for. Now, they're, they're blanketed and we all get them. The, uh, but the, whoever pays for that, in that case, it was Barnaby Joyce. He pumps the money on YouTube's desk. YouTube uses half to manage their operations and they give me half to manage my operations. And for me, that's fuel expenses, fishing expenses, as well as drawing a wage and stuff like that. So that's how those annoying ads work. There are illegal ad blockers, and YouTube is making them harder and harder and harder for people to use them. I'm not going to sit here and tell you not to because I'm realistic, and I know people have got families to feed, but I think they are illegal, and I certainly don't support creators, that's for sure. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to explain to you all how the actual ad system works. So that's why there's ads on so many videos. But like I said, I try and I try and... Average one every five minutes. So if you can see I've got a video coming out and it's, oh, it's 20 minutes long or 22 minutes long, that's probably going to have four ad breaks in it. I'm probably going to space them out evenly. One of my videos recently had nine ad breaks in it. YouTube just smothered it with ads. But I took, uh, I think I found that video, I think I took four out, to be quite honest. Anyway, that's really all I wanted to tell you. I wanted to tell you what's coming up next week and I wanted to just explain how the ads work because I do get people ask me that all the time. Now, I'm not allowed to tell you how much I earn. I know that that is against the terms and conditions, and let's be frank, it's really no one's business. But I earn enough to make a full-time living. I'm probably earning a similar amount of money doing what I love to what I would be if I was working in a factory floor or something like that. I'm not a rich man, but I'm a happy man, and I've certainly got a very good job that I'm happy with. <laughs> Folks, thank you very much for tuning in. Make sure, you stay in uh, make sure you're tuning Sunday night for the trout fishing video, then the redfin fishing video, then the cod fishing video, then the... Uh, like William Hovel video, and then I'm finishing up with uh, with my monthly mashup. And just quickly, I also want to say the seasons are changing. It's quite cool today. We're getting lots of cooler days. The cod fishing videos are going to slow right down now. And at the same time, the trout fishing videos are going to ramp up. So there's going to be 
over the next couple of months, there's going to be less Murray cod fishing videos. I'm still going to be going Murray cod fishing, and hopefully I can catch some and, and make a uh, make more cod videos. But there's not going to be as many, and it's the same with the yabbies. They often go into the mud and slow down now. Hopefully I can still get a few. But on the flip side, now that things are cooling down, the trout fishing is really heating up at the moment. Hopefully the red fins start to bite. They've been very slow across lots of lakes in Victoria lately, and they uh, and I'm hoping to do more fishing at some of my favourite spots like Lake Mutami, where I sit on the bank fishing for carp and occasionally I catch a yellow belly or a redfin or a silver perch. I went over there in summer and it was really warm, the water and the fishing was slow. I'm hoping to do more of that type of fishing as well now. Anyway, folks, thank you all for tuning in. I hope you have a great weekend and hopefully I can see you in the comment section of my videos next week. Have a good one.